I'm really not sure what we should do with this uh, area right here. Um, not that this episode is going to focus on this. No, no, no. This is just an, an initial shot to give you some context to what we're building. And I'm probably going to talk about that in just a few seconds. But uh, I mean, I, the height difference between the bridge and the island is so big that I don't know how I want to be able to sort of bridge the head gap. Um, but uh, yeah, just food for thought. In this episode, however, we're going to be continuing the old town that we started working on in the previous episode. In fact, we're going to be sort of working on that gap that sits in the area that we last developed and the church on the hill that someone in the comments said that I should name Churchill. And I might. <laughs> so, uh, uh, by the way, if you, if you want... Uh, your uh, name, uh, you just to suggest names for neighborhoods, uh, you should head over to my Patreon page. I have a laundry list of uh, names that my uh, patrons have suggested so far. And if you wanna add yours to to that, that's uh, one way to, well, to do so and also to support the channel at the same time, yay. Um, in this episode, uh, we're gonna be, you know, like I said, working on this uh, area of the city, but also we're gonna be focusing heavily on detail work. So if you like detail work, your in for a treat. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to be adding a lot of props. I mean, a lot of props for Night Owl standards at this point. Uh, I think by the end of the episode, I would have added like three or 400 props, which is really nothing. I'm mostly doing a lot of tree plopping, which thankfully doesn't count to the towards the prop count. For those of you who have just watched this for the pretty pictures and don't really know how City Skylines work. So props, there's like a limited amount of uh, elements that you can put in the map. Uh, it's capped to 65,000 and uh, you can't put any more of those. You can't put trees. Trees are like a sep they have their own separate count and also have a mod that makes it unlimited. There is a mod that makes props unlimited, but it's uh, I I've been told not to use it. Uh, and I'm honestly, I want to try to avoid it as much as possible. If I can't avoid it completely, then, you know, I'll get it. But uh, I, don't, I mean, given the amount of detail that I was able to achieve before, uh, you know, adding a lot of props, uh, I'm pretty confident that we may not even be close to the limit. Famous last words, but um, just also should have talked about what just happened on the screen there. So you saw me do a huge terraforming uh, uh, segment there. Uh, basically, the huge hill that was sitting behind the city is not necessarily gone, but it's uh, has been significantly eroded, if that makes any sense. Um, I, I, in the previous episode, or previous episodes, I can't remember exactly when, but I mentioned that the scale of the hills around uh, the main city were a little bit too tall to be realistic. So I actually went and sort of flattened everything out. No, I'm kidding, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't flatten everything out, but I did reduce the height of this uh, of this hill significantly enough that I can actually start developing uh, and expanding the city towards this side. Originally, I sort of set a you know like a limit on purpose. Uh, I tend to do that with geography. I like to you know put you know natural features like a river or a mountain or a hill or a canyon or what have you to you know give me this like uh, this virtual limit that the city shall not pass this line. And uh, after, you know, the last couple of episodes, I, I realized that I was a little bit trapped there because I did want to expand a little bit outwards from the city. Probably not a lot, but enough that I needed to put some roads down. And if the hill was super tall, it just didn't make any sense to, to have it that way. In fact, one thing I didn't realize until way later in the recording of this episode is that I I, I went a little bit too harsh on the brushes and I I basically terraformed below sea level and there was a lot of flooding and a lot of issues that I think I mostly got fixed. But if you see anything weird in the cinematics or, you know, during this, this time lapse, uh, I think I got most of it fixed probably by the time you watch this episode, everything's already back to normal. Just, you know, future, uh, for future reference, just be careful <laughs> with that. Um, in fact, I'll tell you this, in the next episode, we're also gonna be doing quite a bit of terraforming, but uh, 
the reason why I know that is because I already recorded the next two episodes. I was really inspired this last weekend. It was a long weekend, Labor Day weekend. I'm like, yes, let's let's get everything as much as possible done. You kind of whenever you have like that urge to build, like that inspiration, you should like really, really milk it. And that's kind of what I did this weekend. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of like pre-recording a lot because then it's it's kind of hard to to uh, you know to be able to have a conversation in the comments. But um, in this case, uh, I thought it was okay and uh, it was worth it. And obviously, we're we're doing at least for now we're doing two episodes a week of Nidal, or you know, or at least two episodes in a seven day span of time if that makes any sense so uh hopefully you're enjoying this series as much as i have uh, building this over the weekend and uh the cool thing about the next couple episodes by the way is that they're going to have their own unique sort of theme uh we're not necessarily going to continue with the same type of building and the same type of uh, grid layout uh, or road layout sorry that uh, that we had so far so it's just, just going to be you know, for example, this episode is kind of a continuation of what we did in the previous one, but the next couple ones are like brand new things that I think you're gonna really like. Uh, in fact, I already posted some screenshots on Twitter. Uh, if you haven't followed me there yet, twitter.com slash is uh, where you should go. And, and you know, the screenshots there are in no particular order, uh, but might give you an idea of uh, what's to come. Uh, and I'm really, really excited to share that with you. In fact, I think uh, we might even have a live stream on uh, at some point next week so stay tuned for that can promise that right now it's not set in stone but obviously i'm going to schedule it ahead of time so you know that that's coming and uh it's going to be in a time that hopefully it's uh, better for at least the majority of the people watching this which is uh, mostly us and uh, western europe <laughs> so hopefully you'll be awake by the time i go live uh, and in any case, I keep going on these weird tangents. Uh, what I'm doing here, by the way, for the most part, is just adding uh, details with uh, a few planters, trees, and things of that nature. At the same time, I'm trying to mix it up. Uh, I mentioned this before, but I, I wanted to make it really obvious now because I'm putting down these buildings that are not necessarily the nicest. Uh, these are vanilla buildings, in case you were wondering. And uh, for the most part, these uh, the neighborhoods in general, you probably didn't know this, but... Um, there's a, a lot of mixed zoning, so we just don't have a whole chunk of residential and then a little bit of industrial or commercial and then just be, be everything very separated from, from one another. I'm trying for things to be pretty mixed and I notice that that's working in the sense that people are, you know, just walking more than uh, taking their car places. Uh, if they work near where they live, and, uh, you know, they can shop near where they live. They don't really have to venture far for the most part. And, uh, you know, I think uh, in terms of traffic, I think that's definitely working. We'll see once we start adding mass transit, I think it's gonna, it's gonna make things uh, even more efficient. Uh, also, one thing that keeps coming up in the comments is that I should add some vines or graffiti to empty walls. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I may add some graffiti in the future to other walls as well. But, you know, Nidal, uh, as you can see, or as you've been able probably to notice ever since we started working on this project, this is a pretty clean town. It doesn't have a whole lot of uh, nastiness to it. And I kind of want to keep it that way. It's like pristine and perfect and uh, just makes it a much nicer place to want to live in. <laughs> in fact, uh, I've been getting a lot of comments from people saying that they want to live here. I, I do get that uh, with pretty much most of the projects that I've done, except probably FPS because nobody wants to live in an airport. But this one, I feel like it's the one where I've been getting the most amount of comments, you know, along those lines. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know what I'll probably do in, in future episodes? I'm, I'm going to add some like very like ASMR sort of clips that don't have any music, just like ambient sounds just to for you to immerse in the, in the city. If that's uh, if that's something that you may fancy, I guess um, talking about uh, the video format for a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of um, really positive comments on the before and after clip that I did at the end of the previous episode. So I want to repeat that in the next episode. Actually, I'm going to repeat that in the next three episodes that are recorded. Uh, I think that's just going to become a thing. You can let me know in the comments whether or not you appreciate that. But I think uh, for the most part, what I like about it is that it gives you some context. Uh, I noticed a lot of uh, my older projects and just 
CD Skylines videos in general on YouTube that uh, they just start very like focused on the thing that they're going to be working on, but you have no context to what the rest of the city is. So I'm doing my best to include like wide shots on every single episode just to give you uh, some like geographical idea or location to where I'm, I'm building what I'm building. I think uh, that's kind of important and I'm going to do uh, everything that I can to for that to to, to be a thing uh, more and, and you know basically on every episode so that uh, things make a little bit more sense I guess is what I'm trying to say now um, continuing with the detail work over here by the church uh, I'm adding a cemetery in, in, in case you didn't know or what I, what, what I was doing I think it's by the way but the, the the moment I place down those those gates I think it's pretty self-explanatory what it is I'm doing but still worth uh, mentioning these uh, gates are from park life and unfortunately they need to be put on a park sort of district and i say unfortunately because that's just a thing that i really want to do um i am going to name neighborhoods by the way in fact i already have a, a laundry list of neighborhoods that i want to that i want to name and these were all suggested by patrons on my patreon page so uh if you like to contribute names for the series uh that's one way to do it I, ha I have gotten a comment on a youtube video not from a patron that i should name the you know the the area around the church on the hill churchill <laughs> and i think i might just because it sounds funny but um if you want to contribute to the channel and help support the channel and also name all these neighborhoods uh i highly encourage you to go check out my patreon page much appreciated and that's the end of my shameless self-promotion for this for this uh for this episode um i was uh, I, I don't think i mentioned yeah i was going to talk about the the tram tracks here that go through this uh, area of the city um i don't know i just wanted to sort of have something a little bit visually different where the train tracks uh branch out from the main line and, it, and it, they go through this sort of pedestrian only area. Eventually I think I'm gonna put down some like coffee tables, not coffee tables, just like cafe tables. I guess that would be a better term. Same same goes for this uh, main uh, main town square here. I've gotten a lot of uh, tweets and comments from people uh, suggesting, you know, d different town squares from the many cities that are in Europe. And uh, one thing they had in common is they all had this sort of market thing going on. And I was really close to adding that to the uh, to the thing, but I kind of last minute decided to keep it simple. Uh, it's going to be a pretty plain uh, town square. They usually are. They don't even have trees for the most part. That's at least what I noticed. I'm thinking of like the Plaza Mayor in in Madrid, for example. Not that I'm basing this off of that one, but you know that just to give you an idea of, of kind of what I had in mind. Uh, in any case, we are indeed going to be adding markets, but that's happening on episode uh, seven. That's going to happen on episode seven, and it's going to happen on a different side of the city. This one, for the most part, is going to remain like this, pretty clean. I may add a, a few more details in the, in, the, in the future, but for the most part, this is what it's going to look like. By the way, decals also count towards the prop count, in case you didn't know. And, uh, oh, that's another thing that I've been getting a lot of requests, that uh, I should use invisible path instead of uh, the pedestrian path. Primarily on the stairs that I did in the previous episode, that, that huge uh, flight of, set of flights of stairs that, that connects uh, the upper part of the city with the lower part of the city. Uh, I replaced that with Invisible Path. Thank you very much. I did that as well on this uh, on this park that uh, that's that sits between the the area of uh, the city that we developed and uh, the church on the hill or the church hill. Uh, and actually, they work great. Uh, they do, you know, sims still clip through the stairs, so you know it's not perfect, but at least in terms of functionality, uh, it just uh, allows uh, sims that are working. I'm sorry, that are walking to just cut through areas and save a lot of time uh, on their journey. And I'm guessing that's also a main reason why they don't uh, drive their cars so much in the city. We'll see once we start expanding this uh, uh, into the suburbs. Uh, and that's that's also coming very soon. <laughs> Actually, very, very soon. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, okay. And last, last thing of this episode, um, this... We're almost we're almost done with this one, but I wanted to sort of try 
a few different things in terms of uh, road markings. And in this case, I tried to like add a few lines here. I didn't quite like how they looked. So for now they're staying, but I ended up uh, removing a few of them. And I don't know if I'm gonna basically do this for every single intersection. I, the only reason why I did it there is because I just wanted something on those empty intersections because I re use a mod to remove the crosswalks. And if I don't do anything, they look a little bit too plain or a little, a little bit too empty. So, you know, just uh, part of the detail and work. As uh, we go through the before and after shot that I've been uh, sort of uh, hyping <laughs> from earlier in this episode. And uh, here, of course, the detailed cinematics, close-ups of everything that we built. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated and it actually helps a lot. If you're new to the channel and haven't uh, yet, consider subscribing to be notified. But uh, that's pretty much all for now. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.